In this video, we're going to start adding the H2 in memory database to our Spring Boot project, and it is very easy to do so. We will need to add one additional dependency to our pomxml file, and we will need to update our application properties file a little bit. So let's open up the pomxml file, and I will switch to pomxml view, and we will need to add one additional dependency which we can find at the central maven repository so i will look for mavenrepository.com and here at the search bar at the top i will type h2 database and the very first search result h2 here i will click on it and i will pick up one of the latest versions i'll copy it xml and go back to my project and paste it um, right under the JUnit Jupyter here before the closing dependency stack, like this. What I will do, I'm going to delete the version and let my Spring Boot um, project manage versions and I will format my code, like this. Now the scope is test, I will change it to runtime and I do it so that my project depends on this library only at a runtime and it doesn't need it at the compile time, for example. So uh, let's save this pomxml file. And the next step is to update our application properties file. Let's go to our main resources. And here we have application properties. I will open it up. So let's assume that you have created a couple of web service endpoints, but your REST API needs to support a few more, or you need to develop a new feature for your application and you need to test your application and you do not want to create many new records in your standalone MySQL database server and populate it with lots of test data, like test user one, test user two, and then deleting those test records. So what you can do, you can start your Spring Boot project on a different port. And to do that, you can configure your Spring Boot project in application properties to use a different port instead of 8080. And you can do that with server and then you hit dot and then you can type port. So the default port is 8080, but we can assign it a different port like for example, 8888. And this will enable you to start up your project completely independently and have it run in parallel with your other project on port 8080. And now when your application is running on a separate port, you can make it work with the H2 in memory database so that the actual MySQL database server in your office is not being used and is not being filled with lots of test data. So to enable the H2 database and to enable the database console that you can use to preview your database tables and run some SQL queries, you need to enable a Spring H2 console. And you do that by typing Spring and then H2. And you already see that Spring Tool Suite suggests us a few options, like we can uh, enable the console by assigning true to this property. And if needed, you can also assign a different console path, h2 console, and then console path. By default, your console will start at h2 dash console. But if you want to add additional layer of security to your console, you can change the path so that other people cannot guess it, like for example, 99. Although it's not a requirement because this instance of H2 database is running in memory on your computer and all the data that gets recorded to your database or gets modified in your in-memory database will be erased and lost once your application is shut down or restarted. I usually do not change the console path and leave it as is. Okay, so this is all we needed to do at this moment to enable our Spring Boot application to support the H2 in-memory database. So I will save my application properties file. And because my Spring Boot project is using Spring Security and the URLs of our web service API need user authentication, for us to be able to access H2 database console via the browser, we need to make a couple of changes to our web security configuration. Let's bring it up. It is inside of our main Java, and then we will go to security package. And here we have a web security Java file. So we will need to update the code we have inside of configure function. 
Just like with the sign up URL and verification email URL, we will need to make the H2 console URL path accessible and not require user authentication using the JSON web token that we generate. And to do that, I will copy these two lines and I will paste it and I will change the code inside of ant matchers a little bit so I can allow HTTP requests coming for URL path that I will call h2-console and I will need to create this constant inside of security constants. So I will open up security constants and here I will add one more equals and then h2-console forward slash two asterisks like this. It's, let's just use underscore instead. Okay, now I will copy the H2 console and use it in my web security. There is one more change that we need to do and this is to disable frame options HTTP header. And we can disable it by using the HTTP security object and we can access headers there and then frame options and then disable it. So what we are doing here is we are disabling the frame options HTTP header, which prevents the browser to load your page in HTML tags like iframe or frame, for example. And this is for security reasons. To make the H2 database console to open up in browser window, we will need to disable this option. Since our project is a REST API and is not really a website, which we can load in the iframe, it's okay to have it. Although we are adding it only for the purpose of using H2 database and H2 console for testing purposes, you can comment out this line of code once you're done using the H2 database and never commit this change to your Git repository. Now, at this moment, we're almost done with adding support for H2 database for our Spring Boot project. And there is one little thing that we need to do additionally in application properties. And because we have MySQL database connection here, it's better to comment it out because we are going to use a different database now. So I will comment out username and password and I will comment out the data source URL. Although we can configure username and password and the data source URL for H2, we don't really have to do it because these details come pre-configured for H2 database and we don't really have to do it for us to be able to access the database console with the default username and it will work. So I will comment out username and password, I'll comment out data source and the rest I will leave unchanged. Now let's save this and we can continue and run our application and see how it works.